Okay, so my name is Elizabeth Smith and I work at Emory University. So my poster is on Fabry disease. And so basically the genetics of Fabry disease is it's caused by changes in the gene called GLA. Um, and GLA makes an enzyme called alpha-galactosidase A. Um, GLA is on the X chromosome. And for this reason, it can be hard to diagnose men and women. It can be hard to diagnose women with Fabry disease. So at the World Symposium, I presented a poster on how it's hard to diagnose women with Fabry disease. Um, so I looked at three women who came into clinic. Um, one woman was a seven-year-old little girl, and she had had deficient enzyme activity on plasma assay. Um, we worked her up. We did leukocyte. Uh, we did enzyme and leukocyte in plasma. We looked at biomarkers, urine GL3 and lyso GL3. Um, we did sequencing and we did deletion duplication of the gene GLA. All tests were normal. Um, she was referred because she had acroparesthesias, which is pain in her hands and feet. Um, she had severe GI symptoms and her allergist who referred her thought she had Fabry disease. They wanted to start her on enzyme replacement therapy, um, which has an average cost of $250,000 per year. Um, and we wanted to hold off just to make sure and confirm the diagnosis. And it did turn out that she did have um, normal enzyme activity and no mutations detectable in a GLA gene. We also looked at a 44-year-old woman um, who had a kidney transplant status post end-stage renal disease. She had low enzyme in plasma, um, and her nephrologist looked at an old kidney biopsy, and he thought that based on that old kidney biopsy, she might have Fabry disease because he thought it included those um, GL3 inclusions. So we did the same battery of tests. We did leukocytes, we did plasma, um, looking at the enzyme activity in both. We sequenced GLA and we did deletion duplication in GLA. We also ran biomarkers, urine GL3, plasma lyso GL3. Again, all were normal. We looked at her son and we looked at her father. We did enzyme in both and enzyme was normal. So for her, we also had to conclude that even though she had initial low enzyme, um, we wanted to confirm before we started any treatment that she didn't have Fabry, and we did come to the same conclusion. And finally, our last patient was a 56-year-old woman. She had end-stage renal disease, hasn't yet had a, a, a kidney transplant. I believe she's in kidney disease stage three. Um, she had normal enzyme testing, actually, and her nephrologist wanted to refer her because he knew normal enzyme testing for a woman didn't preclude a diagnosis of Fabry disease. So we ran that same battery of tests, um, uh, enzyme and leukocytes, we did the sequencing of GLA and we did the same biomarkers that we had done in the previous two patients, all were normal um, and it was determined that she did not have Fabry disease even though it appeared that she did. Um, so based on all three patients, we just, we wanted to let everyone know that even though it looks like Fabre, it's necessary to do all the follow-up um, testing and, and work to confirm that these individuals don't have Fabre um, before you start a super expensive um, enzyme replacement therapy. There are many other women who we suspect have Fabre, do have Fabre. Um, and we'd obviously ha rather have someone refer a patient who they do suspect has Fabry um, to us so we can confirm or refute the diagnosis or rule it out um, rather than them just thinking they have Fabry, starting them on treatment. Um, and also at the same time, we don't want to miss a patient who has a genetic condition that's easily treatable because you know, there's something we can do for them and we want them to be in clinic.